when we get to the Guardians. But now let's talk okay. a little to Sean Watson here, guys. Yesterday at the opening of his restaurant, which we will preview in full in the TV show coming up on WKYC at 1230, he made a proclamation that he'll be ready for week one of the NFL season. Here's Deshaun in his own words on how his rehab going and how he is confident he'll be ready for the start of 2024. Steve, you can play. Very, very good. You know, the process is, you know, day to day and we just got to take it one step at a time. We can't do anything too crazy. We can't jump uh, the gun and, and try to do too much. The biggest thing right now through this process is uh, load management and just continue to, you know, find ways to just get better and just stay on that course. So, um, you know, I'm trusting all the, the doctors, the PT, Dr. Elitrash and his team out in L.A. with the Cleveland Browns. And um, we just, you know, follow their role and, you know, we'll be ready by we want. No, most definitely. I'd be better um, than, than I was before in week one. So, you know, I'm very confident in, in the roles of the doctors. Um, you know, like I said before, Dr. Elitrash and his team um, following their lead and uh, just all the research that I've done and then just my work and preparation. You know, I put the, my whole life in, into this and, um, you know, I want to make sure I come back even better than before. I think it's interesting, Jay, that he mentioned Dr. Elitrash, who's known I know. as one of the big baseball surgeons. He is. I was surprised to hear him say that name, right. too. And so maybe this is this type of injury is more common in baseball, I, I, we, I guess. I don't I, know. When we, I remember when it first happened, we kind of researched it. Yeah. Nobody There's it. not another comparison from a football player. No, I, not that I've heard so of. So maybe it is. I, I'm not familiar that it, yeah. that it is more of a baseball injury. It's, it, you can understand how it could be. But I was glad to hear him mention his name because he's widely regarded right. as the it guy. It used to be Dr. Andrews. Dr. Andrews, and right. now it's and Dr. Elitrash right. with all the and then pitching they, surgeries right. happened to they got, they got Dr. James Andrews out of here after a while. You know, they, they well, he's got the old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was quite surprised he worked out. He was out of Birmingham. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, huh, interesting that the guy yeah, right, would be out of Birmingham's hub. Like, you wouldn't have guessed that. You don't think of that as a medical hub. No, definitely not. But I was glad to hear that name too. It's funny you brought yeah, that up because yeah. that was one of the things that went off that I like. We'll talk about the declaration that you're going to be ready for week one in the first week of April. Do you guys like that? Would you rather he be a little more secretive about what's going on with this or what? Where are that, you? That, it, it just seems to me like that's how confident he is like in it. Like, you know, when you've had surgery a lot, you know, I, I could only compare it to what I could compare it to. Like, you know, you know the difference between, you know, when you have surgery on one leg or you have surgery on the other. Um, I've torn my ACL in my, my left knee and the right knee. And when I had ACL surgery on the left knee, I was like, oh, this knee, this is, I actually had the feeling of, oh, I'm better than I was before, right? Like, sure. I, st- I was a, a predominantly left left uh, foot jumper off one leg. And I'm like, man, I, I feel still feel explosive off this leg. Now this right one, I felt like I was, you know, at being 25, I thought I was like 35. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, it just would swell up. I couldn't get the swelling out. I was taking anti-inflammatories. They was draining it. And I'm asking him, like, what is the difference between this one and this one? He said, look, no injury is, is the same, right? Um, you know, sometimes technology gets better to a point where you come back and that knee is ready to go better than it was before. So, I think it's a product of, of Deshaun being like, man, this is... I got taken care of. I'm throwing the ball easy. You know, even when he was there, as we was covering the event, he wasn't visibly anything with his arm. He was doing some stuff back in the kitchen, signing autographs. And it just looked like, it looked like he was healthy. Like, it looked like it wasn't something wearing on him. Um, last year, when he talked about his shoulder and the nagging, you could kind of tell in his demeanor because sometimes he didn't even want to talk. Sure. And he was like, I, you, I don't want to talk to the You media. can wear pain in your shoulder on your face. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> when, when you hurt enough, Jay, oh, yeah. you just, when you know you got that ass surgery, it's just all yeah. over your face. Food doesn't taste good anymore. No, Nothing is uh, funny. Uh, you, you're in pain. You, 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 you have to apologize to your wife all the time. <laughs> in advance. In, in advance. Hey, hey, I'm just here. Hey, I might snap at you later today, but that's the shoulder <laughs> that's talking. A, that's, the neck, that's the neck injury right now. Just let me be. But no, I think you're feeling good, boo. You know, I, I like the confidence. I like that he believes in himself. I think whenever, whether it's Deshaun Watson or any other player, when they talk about coming back from an injury, you're always going to take it with a grain of salt. Mm. Not that he's lying, but of course he, wa- he wants to be confident. He wants to portray that confidence. And maybe he is going to be fine. But we know that, as you said, every injury is different. You don't know what setbacks. Maybe he has no setbacks along the way. Right. We don't know what setbacks he may or may not have along the way. So who knows? The fact that he's confident this far in advance, the fact that he's already throwing the ball, 
makes me believe he should be ready to go. Right. But here's an interesting thing. I, I, I had Charles Davis um, on my podcast this week. Great NFL analyst. He's, Charles I love Davis. Charles Yeah, Davis. he's fantastic. And, and he made a really interesting point to me about Deshaun Watson. He goes, he's, he said, Deshaun hasn't gotten better, obviously. That's obvious. But he has spent so much time in the last couple of years either not playing because of suspension or the sitting out with Houston – or rehabbing from injuries. Mm -hmm. And he said he made the point, you know, sometimes we think about, oh, is a guy going to be ready to play? But you don't, in the offseason, you want your best, your players to not just be ready, but to have worked to improve their games. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you're spending the whole offseason yeah. just rehabbing, you can't really do the other part of improving your game. Yeah. So it's not just about Deshaun coming back. It's about, is he coming back and going to be healthy enough in, say, July? That he can get better in training camp. That's a huge point, Bull. Like, it is a good I, I point. I was really, I've, really interesting when I, Charles I, Davis I, said that. When he said that, that, I remember spending two calendar years just rehabbing, right? Yeah. And I remember the first time I stepped back on the field and guys that were not as quick, guys that weren't as big or strong, guys that you just had a natural, you know, say, a natural, uh, uh, you know, talent gap between all those guys have passed you and gotten better. Sure. And yeah. it was the most frustrating thing in the world because I'm like, I, I'm i still the same. These dudes, and these guys that's walk-ons got, I'm like, yeah. I, you can see guys getting better and faster and stronger and you're less effective. And then and then the most frustrating part was you got to spend more time in, in, in preparing your body beforehand and afterwards. Right. So they're going to lift weights, still getting better after practice. You're going to get stretched out and iced. Yeah. And they're right. still getting better. So it's very frustrating. That's a great point he brought up. So, Jay, what about you? I, I, first of all, I'm, I'm glad he's confident. Yeah, sure. And he's clearly confident. He's yeah. not hedging his bets. Right. I'll, I'll be ready to go. Yeah. And I love that. I think that that's great because th there's something that I learned a lot about from rehabbing so many injuries. Yeah. I'm rehabbing one right now. The psychology of rehab. And I had always blown that off, when I, especially when I was younger. Sure. I thought, psychology of rehab, what the hell is that? Yeah. But then I realized particularly with three ACLs, there, it is a real thing. As you know, even though the doctor says green light, you are now 110% in your bad leg mm -hmm. compared to your strong leg. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, okay. So you're thinking this one's stronger than my previously stronger leg. So you must be great. But it never, it, there's always a little voice in your head saying, what if it happens again? First of all, the pain of it is oh. excruciating. Now, th his injury wasn't as excruciating as an ACL tear, but it hurt so bad. when I Now, I did ACL, MCL, PCL first time. I actually went into shock. Oh. oh. I was in shock. When I got to the emergency room, they said, yeah, you're in shock right now. Because I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. But I, I'd already gone through that pain threshold where it was so painful, I just didn't feel anything mm -hmm. anymore. I was hyper It hurt so bad. I was hyper You go through that. And, and the doctor said, just calm down. I said, but you're bewildered. You're like, but I don't know what happened. I, you don't want to look down. They pushing you down. Don't look that way. But yeah, that you know it. It's the pain and it, it's always there. It's always, what if I take the next hit? What if I just make a cut? What happens if... You, it, because you know you're good, but that 5% is right. always there. And it, you do let go of it, mm -hmm. I will tell you from experience, but not until you've gone through the repetitions of game. Yeah. Because nothing can simulate game speed like games. That's it. Yeah. So and, he might feel fine throwing the ball right sure. now, and I'm glad that he does. And he might feel confident that this thing is healed and it's not gonna rec it's, you're not going to have a relapse in any way. But until he's taking consistent hits on that shoulder and bouncing up and saying, yeah, I made it through it, there's no validation that could drop that psychology from your mind. Um, I am five weeks post-surgery. I was throwing objects softly on Monday and, or Tuesday. And I was like a kid in a candy store. And in three weeks, I'll get to throw a ball forcefully for the first time. And my doctor's saying, once you, we, we'll, we're going to creep up to that. Mm -hmm. And when you do it, we're going to ramp up your velocity. We're going to ramp it up, ramp it up. And then we're going to have you throw 20 fastballs in a row. And, and it will be at that point where you start believing yeah. it's healed and there won't be a relapse. But no, yeah. not for me. It won't be until four starts into my regular season right. where I don't have pain 
at all before I start to say, I can now put this thought out of my mind. So I love that he's ready for week one in his mind. Right. I love that. I really do. My preference, though, and I'm glad you phrased the question the way you did, Mike. My preference would be that he just hold that right here. Here's the answer. Everything's going great. Yeah. I'm according to schedule. I'm throwing the ball pain-free. I'm very excited about the start of the season. Let's see what happens. Because we'll all assume a setback if he's not ready or it doesn't seem That's like exactly ready. right. It's like but when yeah. your parents tell you, we're going to the zoo on Friday. Right. And then Friday comes around and says, no, psych, no zoo for you today. Yeah. Now you're upset. So well, it, I, hold the expectations yeah. and surprise all of us in a good way. You know, you brought up psychology. It's, it's something that in sports, when we were all coming up, Nobody ever talked about psychology. No. Nobody ever talked about mental health. How you feeling? How you do? When you get hit, when you get hit in the face, especially with a pitch in baseball, right? That's a mental hurdle to get over. Some guys never right? do. You get the yips. Remember Steve Sachs or sure. uh, Mackie Sasser? Couldn't Chuck throw Nablock. the ball back to home plate. What's that, Mike? Chuck Knobloch. Chuck yeah. Knobloch. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you get the yips. It's a mental hurdle to get. Even the, there's a pitcher, Daniel Bard, who was with the Red Sox, got the yips, was out of baseball for seven years. He's been with the Rockies Didn't he come back? He did. He's been with the Rockies. He's on the injured list right now. Whether it's any of those things or it's just dealing with a traditional injury or just dealing with everything that Deshaun Watson's had to deal with in the last couple of years. Sure. It's it's the, it's the, the, the biggest thing I think we all, certainly I disregarded when the Browns traded for him is the mental hurdles he's got to get over. Obviously, now he's got physical hurdles that he has to overcome. But the mental hurdles are part of this. As human beings, we all have mental hurdles. And there's no doubt, I mean, it seems very obvious, that there are mental hurdles that he has to still get over. Right. From everything he's been through the last three years. And even when you throw it at, you know, my dad used to always tell me, you know, I played three sports. And sometimes, you know, I would just be like, meh. I'm just tired of going to practice. Like, can I just play the games? Oh, yeah. And he's like, listen, the second you stop playing year round, if you stop playing (laughs) baseball for a year, if you stop playing basketball for a year, especially those two, you can play football. He said, but even when you got football, when you take a year off, when you get back, it's going to be different. Again, get speed of the game, you got to adjust to it, and people have gotten better. Well, and that's to your point that you made earlier. It's not just like you're standing still, but everyone keeps moving. When you stop using a skill set, yeah. it regresses. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So you're not and, – and that's why I love the point that you guys made about he's got work to do just to get back to baseline. Yeah. Then we can start thinking about improving upon his game and the work that that takes. So when you're injured – What's the most frustrating thing about it is, yes, everybody moves forward. Everybody's continuing to hone their skill set. I can already feel my right arm muscles atrophy because for yeah. four weeks, I wasn't allowed to do the normal exercises that yeah. I normally do. And now this week, I'm allowed, cleared to start doing them again. And I've noticed I'm not as strong. All of the numbers that I was doing, sets, reps, yeah. and weight, I can't reach right now because... I didn't stand still. I went this way. Right. And that's the psychology of injury and I, rehabbing. Yeah, I wonder if I, – I, it's, it's really pointless at, at, at this point, but I wonder if Deshaun Watson had to do it all over again the year that he sat out with Houston. Now, if he wanted to play that year, would they have let him because the whole thing was hanging over? Right. You, you, I guess you never know. But I wonder if he had to do it over again if he would have played that year for Houston. That's a good question. Because he, would have, he probably would have been better off – if he had. But if you think about it, the trajectory of his entire career is likely different. Yes. It, 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 he's yeah. not in Cleveland. Um, who knows what happens? If he plays very, very well and there becomes a bidding war, he likely goes somewhere else. Right. Maybe. If, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, who knows? But I would love to give him truth serum and have him give the honest answer to that question because that yeah. is a really interesting question. And, and we've seen, like, let alone, we talk about the, you know, you playing the quarterback position. There's other things that go into it, like, Miles Garrett can force himself to like play with after a car accident and still be slightly effective right. on pass rushes because he has his legs, he has other things that he can use to, to perfect the game. Deshaun Watson has to have not only have to have the mental aspect, he has to have the emotional aspect together. He has to be able to throw the, the ball with power. We don't know whether or not that affects his arm strength. Well, to that point, his injury is his motor. If he was a race car, he's got a blown engine right now. Yeah. 
because yeah. that's his most important tool is his throwing shoulder. Right. And if that's damaged, that's like a car blowing a motor. And it's not like a flat tire. And you got to deal with the, the, the accuracy standpoint. Like, does it affect your accuracy? <laughs> right. Can he can he throw the ball where he wants to throw the ball? How pinpoint is he? Does right. he have an arm to fit it in there? See, that's difficult. If you come back and you say, you know, think about it. They got camp arm, right? It's the thing called camp arm. Yeah, there camp is. fatigue. So before he's gone through it and said, oh, it's just a camp fatigue. But what happens if it's you get back and say, well, my arm, it, it gets fatigued sometimes now. Like, I, it didn't do that before. Sure. And, and a lot of people have to change their game. Um, based upon injuries, and it's tough yeah. for a quarterback to do that. And, and Jay, you'll appreciate this because when you get, as you get older, and not that he's old, but you, and let's say he can't throw it quite as hard as he used to. Well, he's got to find a way to adjust his game physically mm -hmm. and mentally to say, hey, I can't do all the things I used to be able to do. I got to find a new way to win. Or slide. think about CC Sabathia, right? Sure. Yep. CC was a great pitcher, and then he started going downhill with the Yankees. And then at the end of his career, he adjusted the way he was pitching. himself. And the last couple of years with the Yankees, he got back to – he wasn't the guy he was right. in Cleveland early with the Yankees, but he was a good pitcher again after it looked like he was done. Do you remember Frank Tanana? Yeah, of course. He was a fireballer in the yeah. 70s with the uh, California Angels right. at the time. Yeah. Nolan Ryan was his teammate. Yeah. He threw like Ryan in the right. high 90s. He was a powerful, overpowering pitcher. Yeah. He lost velocity due to injury, yeah. and he had to completely reinvent himself and did so with a curveball that allowed him to extend his career right. for years and be a winner. That's right. A lot and of so guys that's can't do thing. that. No, a lot yes. of guys can't. Right. So that's a that's an interesting point about Deshaun because if he loses some velocity. Yeah, we don't know. I'm just saying. We don't know that. Right. But if he does, can he reinvent himself? And can he? There's a, there's a disconnect sometimes between this muscle and this muscle. Oh, sure, yeah. When you're used to, for your entire life, fitting a ball in a window and you know the depth of perception and the angle and everything else, your mind tells you, oh, yeah, I got that throw. I've right. made that throw my whole life. Right. But if the muscle doesn't cooperate, that That's ball right. is picked or yeah. it's incomplete or whatever. So it'd be interesting to see what adjustments he has to make. Can he make them? Yeah. But I'm confident he can right now. So we know Deshaun is the Browns quarterback of the future, but we're going to build the ultimate Browns quarterback here after a quick word from eBay Motors. Passion.